Today we're going to talk about getting the best results that you can dialing in a bean to cup machine. A little domestic, super automatic, how can you get the best tasting coffees at the end of it? These things make a particular promise. They say, just put water in, just put beans in, push a button, it's all taken care of. But if you've bought one of these and you've tried to put specialty coffee into them, you might have been frustrated. Because specialty coffee is kind of like the final boss of coffee brewing. It's generally light roast, it's generally dense high grown coffees, and those are more difficult to extract. And these machines are not necessarily built for those kind of coffees. And so the promise of it's easy might have led you to try and tweak and dial in and become incredibly frustrated with these things. Now, the reason I've got six of them here is I'm working on a comparison review, it'll be out very soon. But while they were here, it seemed a good idea to share what I've learned from brewing with them and how I would recommend you approach dialing in, especially for specialty, even though these techniques will work whatever coffee you're using to give you what I think can be a really delicious cup of coffee. Let's start by talking about why these things are kind of difficult when it comes to brewing real espresso. Now the way these machines brew coffee is actually surprisingly similar across the board. The base kind of underlying mechanism. If I open this up, I can show you what I mean. The way that these things generally work is that you have a chamber that we're going to grind into. Your grinder is going to sit right above this here and funnel ground coffee in. When it's hit the dose that it has specified, it's usually a time-based grind on these things, this little chamber will move around so that that puck of coffee gets pushed across and then lifted up, we can get that there, against the kind of brewing chamber. So now it's in brewing mode and it's going to pull that shot. Now if you've been making espresso with a traditional machine, you would know that it's important to prep the puck tamp the puck in order to have an even extraction. That's really fundamental to espresso. And the problem with these machines is that there's no real puck prep. And so what happens is you typically get quite an uneven extraction and you're going to end up fighting that mechanism. If you try and put a very fine ground of coffee as you would use for espresso into one of these brew groups, generally the puck prep isn't good enough and the water will just find a way around the coffee and it won't extract most of the coffee properly. So confusingly, with these things, you actually have to go a little bit coarser. We'll talk about dialing in the grind in just a second in machines that let you do that. But it's important to understand here that we're fighting uneven extraction first and foremost. And so grind isn't always going to be our friend. Getting more extraction through grinding finer is not often the solution to our problems. Now this is well known in the world of espresso. This was actually diagnosed by a, a sort of scientific paper that I made a video about a while ago. And you might have heard of turbo shots. I'll, I'll leave a link to, I think Lance Hedrick's video is very good. Uh, I'll leave a link to that if you want to know more about turbo shots in the world of regular espresso. But those are the kind of ideas we're going to be applying to these machines. Let's start with the first of the step by steps. In step one, you need to work out how much coffee you're using. So what we're going to do is actually take out the waste tray for the machine. And all machines have different waste trays. This one is where the grounds end up. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it on a scale, zero it out, and then we're going to put it back in and we're going to make the machine brew. Now we don't want to weigh the wet spent puck, that's not actually useful. That will be uh, missing some coffee that will have gone into the cup and also it'll be full of water. So we don't know what the ground's weight is. We need the unbrewed weight. So first thing, set the machine to kind of maximum strength rating. It'll be little bean symbols or something like that. You want that at max to know how much coffee is the maximum you can brew with. And then you're going to brew a drink. And then just after it finishes grinding, cut the power. This means that ground coffee will never be brewed. When I turn the machine back on, it will go through its reset process. It moves the little brew chamber around through all the positions as part of that, thus dumping out the ground coffee unbrewed into the little collection box. And yeah, indeed. Uh, so you can see here we've got ground coffee unbrewed. This thing produces about 13 grams of ground coffee at maximum dose. And that's, that's good to know, that's useful to know. Now, some machines won't let you do this properly. It's kind of annoying. Uh, what you'll need to do there is actually weigh the entire brew group. And same thing, interrupt just after grinding and pull the brew group out again, and you'll see it's got ground coffee on the top, and you can weigh that. This is just a little bit easier, but it's a really important thing to know right at the beginning to help develop a good recipe and to get the best out of your machine. Know though that across the machines I've tested so far, doses have ranged anywhere from 8 grams to 16 grams. So 
there's a big variance and that's why it's important to measure right at the start. Now we're going to try and figure out our ratio. Now this machine dose is a little heavier, max is about 15, 16 grams. I'd recommend like a four to one starting ratio with these machines. You may change that one with the other, but four to one is a good place to start. Many machines, and this one included, will let you choose the milliliters, but don't always believe them. What I would recommend doing is aiming for 60 mils, which is what we have programmed here, but weigh the output because it's what's in the cup that counts. You want that to weigh four times the ground coffee dose weight. So here we got 58.5 grams, which is actually pretty good. Really this stage is to try and understand what the machine is actually giving you versus what it says it gives you. Most of them will let you adjust the amount of output by five mils at a time. So you kind of want to adjust it until you get what you want and kind of ignore to some extent what many of them say. This one though, really pretty close, which is good. Now you can at this stage, give what you've got a little taste. That's no bad thing. It'll give you a pretty good idea of where you are in this whole process before you begin to make any other adjustments. Now, even if you're not a straight espresso drinker, taste is gonna be your guide today. I have lots of other tools and things like that that I can use to assess coffee. Most people at home don't. This is not similar to a real espresso. It, it, it's a strong coffee with crema on top, but it's not real kind of true espresso. It's not strong enough. We can't use a fine enough grind. What we're chasing here is a feeling of balance. There might be some acidity, but you want it to be balanced. You want a nice clean aftertaste, no excessive bitterness, no real obvious flaws. It will taste strong if you don't drink espresso regularly, but it should taste pleasant, clean, enjoyable. This particular espresso is pretty good, but I actually think it's just a little bit under extracted. And I know that because it's just a little bit sour. Many people would want to reach for the grind setting, which takes us to a discussion about what you should do about the grind setting with your machine. Not every machine actually has a grind adjuster. If yours doesn't, don't worry too much. It actually makes the process simpler. If yours does, it's generally in the bean hopper at the back of the machine. The range of grind settings across different machines is kind of huge. You might be surprised if you look at a spent puck and see that the coffee feels very coarse. That's pretty normal. Some machines, the finest grind setting is still nowhere near espresso and some it's actually pretty close to espresso. You do not want a very fine grind setting. Finer than an AeroPress just, but not that much finer. Like mocha pot fine, in some cases maybe too fine for some of these machines. So surprisingly coarse. It is what it is. I, I wish they could work a little finer, they can't. And so wherever possible, I'd avoid using the grind setting. You want to go as fine as you can without beginning to have any interruptions to flow. If you see any kind of drip, drip, dripping in the flow, if you see uh, kind of interruptions to the flow, that's generally bad. If you see a flow that starts very slow and suddenly gets very quick, that's very bad. The taste of a channeled brew with these things is a weird combination of it being quite weak, very harsh, very smoky, very kind of um, bitter, but also not very strong and also a little bit acidic too it's not a good cup, it's to be avoided. So generally maybe one step finer than factory, two steps finer than factory at most, but really going very fine on these things does not yield great results. And now the process is pretty simple. You've got your grind pretty close to where you need it to be. We're just gonna use ratio. Each time you brew, increase the amount of liquid used by five mils, have a taste you'll see an increase in sweetness, an increase in clarity, an increase in balance, a decrease in acidity until suddenly you hit a wall of bitterness. And that's the point where you've got everything you want and just a little bit more. So you wanna go back five mils to where you were previous to that. And at that point, you're getting maximum extraction from the ground coffee that you're using. As an espresso, it might be a little bit lacking in terms of texture. It'll taste weak. It's probably half the strength of a traditional espresso and more akin to the espresso you might get from a little pod. But if you're gonna turn it into another kind of drink, getting the good solubles out of the ground coffee is fundamentally the most important thing. They're gonna get diluted down anyway by hot water, by milk or a milk alternative. So getting the flavors is the number one priority. Now I did talk about diluting things down. I, I do quickly wanna to touch on pretty much every machine having kind of a long coffee option. It might be 120 mils, it might be more than that, 200, 300 mils. Generally speaking, I would say we've worked hard to get a good tasting extract that's like an espresso. Just dilute that with fresh hot water. Some machines will let you tap off hot water, others won't. Some will do some fancy bypass brewing, others won't. Some will try and adjust the grind setting for longer coffees and change the dose and all of that stuff. Start with the good espresso thing that we made. 
dilute it with water from a kettle, water you bought on the stove, if you want the best possible results. This liquid here does not taste good. I don't want it in my drink. A few closing thoughts and tips and tricks and stuff. If you're brewing specialty coffee, make sure you adjust the brew temperature. The factory defaults are often set quite low, set it to maximum temperature. For more developed roasts, yeah, you could probably get down to a three to one ratio and have a good extraction. But for lighter roasts, I've yet to find a machine for home that effectively does a good job below a four to one ratio. If you are just too frustrated by the drink being that little bit too weak for your tastes, yeah, sure, go a little bit finer, start the process again, start back at three to four to one, somewhere in that range, and work your way through the extraction again. But chances are you're gonna need that bigger beverage to get a good extraction. None of these machines can brew very fine grounds well. I know I keep saying that, they'll often let you load ground coffee into them. I wouldn't load proper espresso grounds into them. They will not brew properly, but they can brew well. If you adapt what you do around them, then I think you can get some pretty good results at the touch of a button. But now I'd like to hear from you down in the comments below. Have you found something similar to me if you own one of these things? Have you tried putting specialty coffee into your super automatic and been frustrated by the results? Maybe this will renew your interest in experimenting again. I certainly hope so. But let me know down in the comments below. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.